Now, relatively short lesson today on the confidence interval for a mean. Okay, and what I mean in that situation is what that actually stands for is the level of confidence that I have in stating that the mean of a population is within a given range. Okay, why do we not just calculate the mean of a population? Answer the population is too big, there is nothing outside the census that ever uses the entire population. Samples are used instead and samples upon samples upon samples upon samples, whether they're clustered sampling, whether they're stratified sampling, doesn't matter. Samples are used. OK, so confidence interval for a mean. What mean? It's the population mean. OK, and wouldn't it be nice for me to be able to say with a certain high degree of confidence that I think the mean value of the population of this country lies between these two values. Now, mathematically speaking, we can do that, okay? As long as we understand that it is a mathematical exercise. And it depends, first of all, on parameters from the population and statistics from the sample. So the first thing you've got to be very careful of is that when you're reading the question, you understand whether you're dealing with the entire population or whether you're dealing with a sample. And then based on which of those two you're dealing with, you will have your mean, you'll have your standard deviation, and you'll also be bringing in probability. And if you bring in probability and statistics, we go back to what we dealt with in the previous chapter, you'll be dealing with z-scores. And why am I dealing with z-scores? Because statistics and parameters can come from anywhere. They can be height, they can be width, they can be colors, they can be whatever, okay? So therefore, in order for me to standardize what information I'm gathering, all the information I gather has to be transferred into z-scores and then the z-score is then used to calculate various different uh, probabilities and possibilities. Anyway, more about that later on. Since populations are often very large or otherwise hard to investigate, we often have no way of knowing the exact value of the parameter. What's the average age of everybody in Ireland? Answer, having a clue. Why? Not going to count it. Too many. Five and a half million people? No way am I going to count their ages and put them all together. So what do I do instead? I take a number of samples. I calculate their means. I bring all their means back. Okay. And the sample means are then used in order to build a 95% confidence interval where I can say, oh yeah, well, with 95% confidence, I'm sure that the average age of the people in Ireland lies between these two values. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this section. A point estimate is a single value used to estimate the population parameter. So I might decide, OK, what's the average age of people in Ireland? I might come up with an idea. I might get a couple of samples and get an answer and say, OK, as far as these samples are concerned, here is the average age. Now, that point estimate is exactly what it is. It's an estimate. It is not the true value. It's trying to estimate what the population parameter is. So the sample statistic is going to try and estimate the population parameter. I hope those definitions make perfect sense to you. A point estimate doesn't give us any indication of how good the estimate is. So say, for example, I take 20 samples of a thousand people and I work out what the mean age of those 20 samples are. I have a number, but it doesn't tell me how accurate that number is in relation to the actual true value of the mean age of the five and a half million people on this island. So what do I do? I bring in what is called my confidence interval and a confidence interval, as you can see in the last sentence here, will give us the information about how to understand the accuracy of that particular point estimate. OK. A confidence interval is a range of values. Now, what's a range of values? Well, it is a, a list of numbers starting at the smallest, finishing at the highest. That's what a range is. It has a small lower value and it has an upper high value and Within 95% confidence, I can say that my population parameter is between those two values. The margin of error E for the population mean at 95% confidence. Now, the reason why I have that in red is because the margin of error is different for other levels of confidence. So there is a different margin of error for 90% confidence. There's a different margin of error for 100% confidence. There's a different margin of error for 99% confidence. You're lucky that in this case, with the higher, uh, the higher level maths, that we're only going to look at 95%. So we only have one, okay? And here it is. The margin of error in words 
is 1.96 times the standard deviation of the, of the sample. Now, what's the standard deviation of the sample? The standard deviation of the sample is sigma over root n, where n is the number of people in your sample. So that's the standard deviation of the sample. If I multiply that by 1.96, that gives me the margin of error. That's it. And what's a margin of error? A margin of error is a number that is added to and subtracted from a given statistic in order to give us a range of numbers inside which, with 95% confidence, I can say the population parameter lies. Okay, that's exactly what it is. So to get your margin of error at 95%, simple, 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample, which is sigma over root n. Sigma, don't forget, is the standard deviation of the population. Sigma over root n, is a standard deviation of the sample. So the margin of error is 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample, which is 1.96 times sigma over root n. Okay, and I have that written here. As you will see, there it is. It's 1.96 times sigma over root n. Now you can use brackets if you wish, you don't have to, but you can if you want to, because that will just remind you that that there is the standard deviation of the sample. Okay, let's keep that in mind. And lastly then, 95% confidence level is also known as the 5% level of significance. Now just be careful, they both mean exactly the same thing. A 95% confidence level is known as a 5% level of significance. A 90% confidence level would be a 10% level of significance. A 99% confidence level would be known as a 1% level of significance. Do you see the relationship? When you add the confidence level together with the level of significance, you get 100. So therefore, they are exactly the same thing. It's a different way of stating the same reality. So 95% confidence can be also expressed as the 5% level of significance. And in the questions, they interchange them. So just be very careful that you understand that that is two ways to describe exactly the same type of calculation. We rarely know the population standard deviation. Why? Because we don't deal with the population. Unless you're doing the census for a government, you're not going to be dealing with the entire population. So therefore, you will not know the standard deviation. However, we can use, for the population, we can use and we're allowed to use the standard deviation of the sample as an approximation. However, just keep in mind, the population standard deviation is sigma. And for the standard deviation of the sample, we still use sigma, but we divide it by root n, which n is the number of people in your sample okay so just keep that in mind but because we don't know the standard deviation of the population we can use the standard deviation of the sample and use it in the formula where we are asked to do so okay <clears throat> the 95 percent confidence interval for the population mean is now if it's a confidence interval it has to have a lower value and it has to have an upper value okay so there must be two values and the way in which we get them is as follows because of the fact that it's a 95% confidence interval built on the sample mean, then we start with the sample mean. So it's the sample mean plus or minus 1.96 times the sample standard deviation. Okay, so therefore x bar minus 1.96 times sigma over root n will give me this value here, x, and x bar plus 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample will give me that value here. So by using that formula, that's going to give me two answers, the low one and the high one. Okay, the low one will go in there, the high one will go in there, and that will give you the two bookends of those range of values within which I can say with 95% confidence that the population mean is hiding. Simple as that. Okay. So there's the formula x bar minus 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample and x bar <coughs> which is the sample mean plus 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample okay so it's easier just to put the two together it's x bar plus or minus 1.96 times sigma over root n that's the way i like to prefer that's why i like to write it down and that will generate the two values for you Better to take a look at an example rather than to waffle about this all day. And an example like the following page 150, question 5. When people smoke, the nicotine they absorb is converted to cotinine, which can be measured. 
A sample of 100 smokers has a mean cotinine level of 173. Assuming that sigma, the standard deviation of population, is known to be 120.5, construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean cotinine level of all smokers. Now, <clears throat> before we move on, a couple of things in the question themselves. First of all, sample of 100 smokers. Okay, that's key. Sample has a mean. What's the mean sample? X bar. Okay. And sigma is the standard deviation of population, which is 120.5. So straight away, let's write down what's in this question. The number of people in the sample, 100. Okay. The sample mean is 173. Sigma is 120.5. So therefore, I have to take those values and build a 95% confidence interval. And here it is. It's X bar, so the 95% confidence interval equals X bar plus or minus 1.96 times sigma over root N. And all you do is fill in the numbers. 173 plus or minus 1.96 times 120.5 over the square root of 100. And on your calculator, 173 plus or minus. So 1.96 times 120.5 divided by the square root of 100, 10. Of course, you all know that. And that comes out as 23.62. 23.62. Now, what does that do? That gives me the upper and lower values of the range. So the first one, 173 minus that uh, 23.62, that comes out as 149. 0.38 and then 173 plus the 23.62 in your calculator comes out as 196.62 so therefore what does that mean what does that stand for that tells me that with 95 percent confidence i can say that the mean population cotinine level is in between 149.38 and 196.62. And I can say that with 95% confidence. Now look, is 95% good enough? No, there's a lovely thing. Go into Google and just type up, is 99.9% .9 good enough? Just type that in and you'll get your answer. If 99.9% .9 is not good enough, then 95% is pretty drastic. But however, it's a way that we can measure the accuracy of my point estimation in representing a population parameter. Okay, that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, second question. Farmers measure daily milk production in pounds. Ayrshire cows produced 47 pounds of milk per day with a standard deviation of six pounds. Jersey cows average 43 pounds of milk production per day with a standard deviation of five pounds. Assume that milk production is normally distributed for all cow breeds. A. What's the probability that a randomly selected Ayrshire cow produces more than 45 pounds of milk per day? Okay, back to the opening paragraph. What is in there? Farmers measure daily milk production in pounds. Ayrshire cows, all of them, the entire population, average 47 pounds. That's X bar. Oh, sorry, that's uh, mu, I should say, not X bar. That's mu. <clears throat> that's mu because it's the entire population. Okay. Uh, with a standard deviation, that's sigma of six pounds. Jersey cows, how many of them? All of them, entire population. They average 43 pounds, so that's mu for the jerseys. And a standard deviation of what? That's sigma for the jerseys. Okay, let's go to part A. What is the probability that a randomly selected Ayrshire cow produces more than 45 pounds of milk per day? Now, probability in statistics can only be done one way, that's through Z scores. Why? Because here in this question, the statistics that are being used are pounds. Now we have to standardize that into Z scores. So first of all, what is the probability that a randomly selected Ayrshire cow? Randomly selected from where? From the entire population. So what do we want to do? The what is the probability that a randomly selected Ayrshire cow X produces more than, greater than, 45 pounds of milk per day? So there's the probability written in terms of the cows themselves and pounds of milk, okay? What I have to do now is I have to turn that 45 into a Z score because I want to know what's the probability of my Z score 
being greater than whatever 45 is as a z-score. And I hope you remember that to get z-scores, it is the parameter under review minus the population average over the standard deviation. Now, because this is for Ayrshire cows, what do we have up here? We've got 45, that's the under review. So 45 minus mu, which is 47, over a standard deviation of six pounds. So that gives me minus two over three, which is minus not points, minus a third, three, 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 three. So it's minus a third, okay. So that's going to be minus point three, 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 three. And once I have my Z score, I go to this page 36 of your tables you go to your z score tables to work out the probabilities and you find 0.3333 but unfortunately it's minus 0.3333 that ain't there so we've got to go and try and use symmetry to help us here so first of all where is this my normal curve there's zero on a normal curve the middle is the mean of zero or i should say the um the standard deviation is zero, okay? Where's minus 0.33? Well, it's kind of here, isn't it? Kind of there, minus 0.33. Okay, what does it want me to do? To work out the probability that it is greater than that bar. So they want to work out the probability, want to get that section, that area. What's the problem? Z scores only give me readings to the left. So therefore, I'm going to engage symmetry. Now, what I'm gonna say here is again, there's your zero that the area in front of minus 0.33 is exactly the same as the area that is behind plus 0.33. And that's it now, that's all I've got to do. The area that is in front of 0.33, or sorry, behind 0.33. So it's not again, the area that is in front of point minus 0.33 is exactly the same, symmetrically speaking, so they're the same, as the area behind 0.33. So therefore, I want the probability that Z is less than 0.33. That's all I've got to do. And in this case here, what's 0.33? Well, 0.33 on your tables is 0 0.6293. 0 0.6293, which gives me a probability of 62.93%. That's it. So the probability that Z is greater than minus 0.33 is exactly the same as the probability that Z is less than 0.33. Symmetry works when it's a normal distribution, okay? And as long as the shaded areas match, you can use that in order to calculate the probability. So there's the answer to question one, okay? Question two. I hope I don't have to carry anything in from there. 20 Jersey cows are selected at random. What is the probability that two or more of these cows will produce more than 54 pounds of milk per day. Hint, binomial distribution. Okay, back to the hint in a moment. Now, 20 Jersey cows, that's a sample. But unfortunately, we're given no statistics about the sample whatsoever. In fact, if you go back to Jersey cows, the only thing we're given is the population average and the population standard deviation. So therefore I can't use the sample uh, formulae in order to calculate the z-score. What I have to do here is I still have to use the population parameters in order to help me to calculate the z-score. So what do we want to do? What's the probability that two or more of these cows will produce more than 54 pounds of milk per day? Now let's just forget the two or more for a moment. More than 54 pounds of milk per day. So what's the probability, let's just deal with one cow for the moment, that one of the Jersey cows produces more than 54 pounds of milk a day. What do I have to do? I've got to turn that 54 into a z-score. So I want to work out what is 54 pounds of milk as a z-score, because that then is going to allow me to go to the tables. Well, let's see. In this case, because we're dealing with only population parameters up here, we have to use x minus mu over sigma. x is the parameter under test, which is 54, minus the population average, which is 43, all over sigma, which is five. Okay, so 54 minus 43 divided by five comes out as 2.2. Okay, so now 54 is 2.2 as a z-score, so you put that in there. So let's take a look at this in the normal curve. 
and see where this is. Okay, there's zero. Where's 2.2? 2.2 is going to be there somewhere. What do I want to know? What's the probability of z being greater than 2.2? So I want to work out that area there. Okay, but again, tables only give me this the area that is to the left of that particular z score. So now, if I want to work out this area here, okay, can't use symmetry because if I flip that around, it's going to give me the area in front. So I'm not going to do that. It's going to give me a negative z score as well, so I can't use that. So instead, what I'm going to say is look, the whole thing is 1. If I take 1 minus the area that is behind 2.2, then that's going to give me the area in front. So that, in turn, becomes 1 minus the probability of z being less than 2.2. And we can work that out because it's 1 minus. So you go to your tables and 2.2 is 0 0.9861. And 1 minus 0 0.9861 is equal to 0 0.0139. Okay, so there's the probability that one cow will give more than 2.2. Okay, so we've worked that out. Okay, now problem. What is the probability that two or more? Go back to the chapter on probability. When they give you questions about two or more, that's ambiguous. That could be two or three or four or five up to 20. What's the opposite to that? Well, it can't be none and it can't be one. So therefore, 1 minus the probability of 0 minus the probability of 1 will lend you then will give you the probability that it could be 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 up as far as 20. So instead of doing 2 or more, we do not none and not 1. Okay? Now I'm going to take note of that value there, 0 0.0132, because that is the probability that they will give more than 54 pounds of milk. Okay, so let's just clear that and give ourselves some space. Now, hint binomial distribution not really i prefer to say bernoulli trial because i'm just thinking here there are 20 cows so it's going to be repeated 20 times there's only two outcomes they do give over 54 or they don't give over 54 and the probability of success and failure is exactly the same so in this case the probability of success that they will give more than that is what we've just calculated 0 0.0132 the probability of failure is one minus that which is, uh, let me see, 1 minus 0 0.0132, which comes out as 0 0.9868. Okay, so now what do I want? 1 minus the probability of 0 or the probability of 1. So there's my probability come back into play again from the previous chapter. I can't get the probability of 2 or 3 or 4. It's too many involved. So instead of that, it's 1 minus what it's not going to be. It's not going to be 0. It's not going to be 1. So 1 minus. Let's work out the probability of 0. Out of 20, I don't want any successes. So 0 0.0132, which is the probability of success, raised to 0. Probability of failure? Well, I want them all to fail. So that's 20. Okay. And then again, minus. What's the probability of 1? Out of 20, I want 1 success. 0 0.0132 raised to the power of 1, and I want 19 failures. The rest of this is calculator work. So it's 1 minus, let's work out this. 20C0 is 1. Anything to the power of 1 is 1. So this is just 0 0.9868 raised to the power of 20. And that's 0 0.7666. 0 0.7666. Okay. 20C1 is 20. 0 0.0132 to the power of 1 is 0 0.0132. And then I want to multiply that by 0 0.9868 raised to the power of 19. Which is 0 0.2051. So that's the probability of none. That's the probability of 1. So if I want to work out the probability of 2 or more, I take 1 and I remove the probability of 0 and the probability of 1. So that's going to give me 1 minus 0.7666 minus 0.2051. And that comes out as something very, very small. In fact, it comes out as equals 0 0.0283, which works out as 2.83% of probability. So there's a 2.83% probability that they'll give over 54 pounds of milk, which makes perfect sense. 
the normal average distribution or uh, normal sorry the average production is 43 pounds so to get 54 pounds when the average is 43 is quite a small probability and in fact 2.83 so it kind of seems to be a logical enough answer okay last part and again i hope i don't need anything from there i don't think i do 400 frisian cows are randomly selected the mean production of this sample there you go sample so the mean of the sample is x bar okay was an average of 47 pounds of milk per day with a standard deviation that's sigma of 6.5 pounds find a 95 percent confidence interval for the mean production per day of this breed okay so 400 frisian cows now if i want a 95 percent confidence interval write down what it is first write down the formula it's the sample mean plus or minus 1.96 times the standard deviation of the sample okay in this case n is 400 so the sample size is 400 x bar is 47 and sigma is 6.5 so i want to put all of them in there so that gives me 47 plus or minus 1.96 times 6.5 over the square root of 400 okay what does that become 47 plus or minus 1.96 times 6.5 over square root of 400 is 20 that's quite okay to type in and we end up getting 0.637 so what is my 95 percent confidence interval well what's the lowest value in this confidence interval it's 47 minus the margin of error which is 0.637 which works out as 46.363 and then it's 47 plus for the margin of error so 47 plus the margin of error which is 0.637 so that is my 95 percent confidence interval now what does it mean what does that stand for it says the following with 95 percent confidence i can say that the population mean of these frisian cows is between 46.363 pounds of milk and 47.637 pounds of milk per day that is where the population average will lie with 95 percent certainty that's it okay now over to you five questions using the confidence interval using probability using the z scores give them a shot page 150 page 151 if any of them are non-doable you have a difficulty with them or you're stumbling over them or you need z scores revised or anything else uh, cleared please send me an email and i'll send you back the solution